like for real. Am I the only one who hates doing their brows? <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I am bringing you another episode of Eyeshadows and Tea and today the palette I will be reviewing is the Natasha Denona Love Palette. Yay! I did use this palette today for my eye look plus I talked about a couple topics mainly two so if you're ready then I'm ready so let's get started. Before we get started, I do want to say welcome to all of our new family members out there. And in case you're not familiar with me yet, my name is Melissa Leah Garrett and I'm a cruelty-free makeup and beauty reviewer. I'm a makeup enthusiast, a plus size beauty, and a PNH and ITP fighter. If you'd like to know more about those two diseases, there are videos down below in my playlist that you could check out. Also, while you're at it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button to join the fam and hit that notification bell. Therefore, you know when I'm posting, but I mainly post on Tuesdays and Fridays. Also, give this video a like while you're at it. So, yeah, I am so sorry that I only got two videos out last week. My goal was to have a video for every day, but it didn't happen. So I'm attempting to try it this week. We'll see how it goes. Um, life came up. It, it's been happening lately and I hate it, but hey, I got two videos up. <laughs> Today's episode of Eyeshadows and Tea, I am going to be reviewing the Natasha Denona Love Palette. Um, I did post a poll on my Instagram if you wanted me to, excuse me, review the either this palette first or the Vizzy Art palette first. You guys voted Vizzy Art first and then this one, so now we're doing this one. Um, I also talk about a couple topics that have been going on the past couple days um, as far as PR and Physician's Formula. So let's just go ahead and talk about this palette first. If you want to bypass all that I'm going to talk about as far as the info for this palette, I am going to put a timestamp right here so you can just skip all that I'm getting ready to talk about and go straight into the tea and tutorial. The Natasha Denona Love Palette is the recent release from Natasha Denona and as far as this brand goes, I was really skeptical on purchasing any more eyeshadow palettes considering the nightmare I had with the Tropic palette a couple years ago, year and a half, um, whenever. Um, I do have that video down below if you want to check that out in my Swatch and Review series playlist. Um, but I saw this palette and I love the color scheme and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it another shot. I do love the outer carton. It's nice and shiny. The sad part about it is I get my fingerprints all over it, but whatever. <laughs> um, and all the information is on the back. Um, you do have the eyeshadow names right here, but they are printed on the palette itself. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, I know the Vizzy Art palette, they had the shade names on the back. I realized that later on in the video, I had a major blonde moment. <laughs> yeah. That got taken care of quick. <laughs> it really doesn't have a story on the back like some um, palettes do. It does say, however, it is made in Italy. It is alcohol free, mineral oil free. It is paraben free. Of course, it's cruelty free. And it also says to keep out of reach of children. I think this is like the first brand I've actually seen someone put that on there. Interesting. <laughs> This is what the actual palette looks like. It is a beautiful shade of a blushy pink. And of course, on the back, it, they do have the dots. Um, when I did the Tropic palette review, I wasn't sure what this was for, but I was informed it's for if people want to depan the palette, they can easily just poke into these holes and the shadow will pop up. So I do appreciate those out there who did tell me that. So, of course, it has the holes on the back in case you want to do that. Um, this eyeshadow palette um, does have a weight of 19.35 grams um, and 0.47 ounces per shadow. This is what she looks like on the inside. This was marketed as her Valentine's Day palette, and I can see why, because you have a nice combination of reds to pinks to purples. It's a great ratio. You have a few golds in there, and it's just a really, really nice, cohesive color story. Um, you do get a nice size mirror. Hey, um, I don't... It doesn't have a plastic piece on it. I, I never peel them off the mirrors anyways. Um, it did come with one in the palette, but I think I threw it away. <laughs> um, you do have 15 shadows in this palette. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight metallic shades. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven metallic foil shades. Um, I do think Commitment is more of a satin shade, though, than a metallic shade. Um, but because it, it's not a true matte. And if you have this palette, you, you can see that. Um, and actually, I will show it up close. I don't know if you guys see. Because as you see, Valentine is a matte and Commitment above it. Looks like it has more of like a satin finish to it. So I am really excited to show you guys how this palette works. So let's just go ahead and talk about some tea and try this out. Let's go ahead and get this rolling. I went ahead and primed my eyes with my Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base. And then I went into the Love Palette with this shade first and kind of just set it a little bit. For transition, I do want to go in this shade right here, Soul. And let's just go ahead and just dive into this PR topic that just seems to like come around every three to six months for some reason. Um, first, let's go ahead and try. Ooh, yes. I think I'm going to like this. <laughs> Please pardon my bottom gums. I do have a hematoma coming up and it hurts and it's gross. And I'm sorry if you happen to see it. Um... So, to start this PR topic, let's go ahead and get into um, the ABH uh, debacle that was going on. So, last week, Norvina had posted, I guess on Twitter, that um, she had taken quite a few people off of her PR list and everybody just went ballistic. And I kind of see where she was coming from. I don't know why people are so ballistic, going ballistic over it. Especially if you are on the PR list, you get PR and you're not doing anything with it. Um, as far as actually promoting the product that you're getting PR for. That's basically what PR stands for. You... Um, well, that in public relations, everyone's going to say that in the comments. But you're basically getting a free product that you need to show your audience how it works. Regardless if it's like a YouTube video, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, Twitter, whatever. If you have the platform, you need to use that platform to show people how the product works, your review on it show the product off in a product shot, swatches, whatever. That is your um, responsibility as someone on a PR list to make sure that your audience knows about the product. They know the pros and cons of what you think. They know prices. If they need to know ingredients, if they need to know if it's cruelty free, if it's vegan, anything, that is your responsibility. Just because you are on a PR list, does not mean you get to brag about being on a PR list and then do absolutely nothing when your product comes in. You just show like a 15 minute clip saying, or a 15 second clip saying, hey, look what I got in PR and that'd be it. No, you have to use the product and you have to give your audience your honest opinion on it because your opinion is what's gonna sway them to use their money and I just don't get why people were so up in arms about it. In my opinion, I think brands should start cutting people off PR lists to make way for people who actually want to do what the brand needs for them to do. And that is to bring in sales. Um, I want to give a quick example of a brand that I believe has one of the best PR programs. I really like how that shade went down. It's one of those shades where if you need it to lighten out like I did, you could just blend it and it blends magnificently. But if you want to have it a little darker, you can build it up. It's just, oh, that is a really pretty shade. This, this palette is doing me good so far because we all remember the last time I used a Natasha Denona palette, it wasn't all that great. 
Okay. <laughs> so the next shade I want to go into is this shade right here, Heart. And we'll see how that goes. I am praying that it doesn't blend out to a pink. I mean, because as you see, it is quite red on the brush. But we all know reds tend to turn pink when you blend them out. So let's just see how this goes. <laughs> all right. Now, as I was saying, um, with the brand that I really want to talk about that I think has a magnificent PR program, that's Gerard Cosmetics. I have been on their PR list for, I want to say about two years now. Um, and I was using their products before I was even on their list. In fact, how I got on their list was because they saw a post of mine on Instagram and liked what I did. So after that, I was on their PR list and I'm forever thankful for that. Now, the way that um, Jen Gerard does her PR program, and this is different from the actual affiliate program, is she has the affiliate program where, you know, she gives a discount code and affiliate link and they can earn commission, but she has affiliates that are also on the PR list as well. So she's got both. Um, the way that she works her PR list is that she gives PR credits every... I want to say it's either every other month or every three months. She doesn't do it every month, um, at least as far as I've seen. And she gives them to the people that actually do what they're supposed to do. And if there's a new product coming out, she's going to send it to the people who she knows are going to show the product off, who are going to, you know... You know what I mean, who, who are going to show what the product does, give all the information out and everything. Um, for example, I got the clean canvas base. They sent me the clean canvas base and they sent me the, um, it's back here, well, the PR box is back there, the Rich Lux Slay All Day collaboration. In, in return, I did posts about it on Instagram. I did videos about it here on YouTube and that's what you're supposed to do. Um, as far as the PR credits go, I am, I do get PR credits sometimes, but if I don't get them all the time, that's fine with me because I have enough product in my arsenal that if her team needs me to do something, I can just whip it up and it'd be done. There are other um, affiliates out there who are on the PR list that can't do that. And I would much rather um, the PR credits go to them so they can build up their arsenal and show people how the products work. Because, I mean, that's just the way PR works. And I really like the fact that this is staying rather red. I really do like that. Um... And that's how PR should work. It should be a rotating um, cycle of, P it should be a list, that's what I want to say, of rotating out your PR people instead of just sending massive and massive amounts of PR products to everybody on your list. I mean, and I've seen the packages that ABH sends out and those are massive especially when they bring on a new person onto their onto their PR program they send them out basically every single item that they have it's just that's a lot a lot of money and that these brands expect their return on their investment you are the investment if you are getting PR from a brand um do not think that you should feel entitled forever to be on a or feel entitled to forever be on a PR list because you're on it because that's not the case if you're not doing anything with it I think a brand should take you off the second well not the second but if they're sending you a release and they're noticing a pattern in that couple releases or within a couple releases that you're not doing anything but just showing off your PR in like a 15 second Instagram story, they need to take you off. I'm sorry, that's just how I feel. They need to put someone on that is actually going to 
do the work. And that's what the problem is these days with some of these quote unquote influencers. They want all the free stuff. They want all the money, but they don't want to do the work. The next shade I want to go into is this shade right here, Passion. Sorry. And I'm going to place that all over my lid. Yeah, we're going for a different kind of thing today, I guess. I don't know. Now, Natasha Denona metallics are pretty spectacular. Ooh. I like this. I like this a lot. All right, I'm going to put this down dry, and then I'm going to wet it to see if I can get some more intensity. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Well, actually, I'm kind of done with that. Now, the next PR topic I want to talk about recently came up, I want to say it was Friday? Yeah, Friday. And that is the topic of um, drama channels receiving PR, specifically makeup PR. Okay. <sighs> I know I'm going to hear about it. And at this point, I'm just like, whatever it is, what it is. Brand's decision who they send PR out to. Ultimately, it all just comes down to that. They're going to send PR to who they think can drive in the most business. Um, unfortunately, most of the time, those are people with higher follower counts higher subscriber counts and don't really have anything to do with the makeup business in general. It, it happens. It does. Do I think that drama channels and people who aren't in the makeup community receive PR? If they are going to do what needs to be done and actually use the product, show the product off, review the product, then yes, absolutely. If you are that person who feels entitled to get PR because you have the follower account, because you have the subscriber account, because other brands are sending you PR because they're like that, then no, I don't think you deserve it at all. Um, regardless of your follower count, your subscriber count, whatever, if you are not doing what you're supposed to do, and you're not in the makeup world, then no, I don't think you you should get PR. That's just how I feel. Now, there are going to be brands that will send PR out if they, you know, bigger brands that have the means to do it. They are going to send PR out to their friends and their family and whatnot. That's fine. Totally understandable. But for... Someone who just has the follower count and doesn't really have anything to do with what the PR they're getting, then no, I don't think they should get that. Cool. I am really liking this. This is turning out really good so far. All right. Now I'm going to go in with this shade Heartbeat right here and just kind of blend those two together, put it on the outer corner, bring it into the crease to blend the lid together with the rest of the eye. Let's see how this goes. Oh, this is amazing. Oh my God, I'm loving this. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. Now that I'm done fangirling over this eye look. <laughs> um, but that is what I think about the PR issue. Like I said, it is an ever-growing debate. And it's going to be for till the end of time. It really is. Um, blend this out. These shadows are blending beautifully. And that was one of the problems I had with the Tropic palette was the blendability on it. Wasn't all that great, but these are blending beautifully. And the Tropic palette was more than this one. Okay, so 
Another issue that came up over the past couple days, I actually saw this on Friday, Friday once again, was Physician's Formula Cruelty Free Status. So I was on Facebook, minding my business, do, 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 you know, story of my life. <laughs> and I came across a post in a group that I'm in about Physician's Formula's cruelty-free status. I will clean all the edges up. And how a specific cruelty-free um, blogger doesn't um, see them as cruelty-free anymore. Of course, this perked up my attention because, as you guys know, I am a cruelty-free makeup enthusiast and I keep up to date on stuff like that. So I'm reading the article and it said that Physician's Formula is currently test I mean, not currently testing, it's currently being sold into the mainland of China. All right, so we had the big wet and wild debacle last year and I made the decision to stop using wet and wild on my channel I had a couple people ask me if I was going to keep using physicians formula now here's where everything gets tricky when it comes to mainland of China cruelty free blah 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 everyone's got their own opinion on it this is just what I feel about it okay The reason that Physicians Formula is selling into mainland of China and keeping their cruelty-free status in the States is because the products that are being made over in China are being made with materials that are sourced there. They're not being sourced from other regions of the world. Therefore, the product does not have to go under pre market animal testing however comma should a problem arise with consumers with that product the product will then be pulled off the shelves and do what is called post-market animal testing which doesn't happen that often as far as we know so what does this mean as far as physicians formula on my channel According to Physicians Formula, they said that the moment that a product of theirs is even in question to be post-marketed, animal tested, they are going to pull all their products from the shelves. That and they are starting the process with the Leaping Bunny pilot program that CoverGirl is currently on, the Leaping Bunny International pilot program that CoverGirl is recently on. Now, as far as Physicians Formula being on my channel, I am still going to use Physicians Formula products. Let me tell you why this is different from Wet n Wild. The reason why this is so different from the Wet n Wild situation is that um, Physicians Formula did not flat out lie Ooh, I need to blend this out because I put a little bit too much up here. Physicians Formula did not flat out lie to everyone saying that they weren't testing or they weren't being sold in China. Okay. Whereas Wet n Wild did. Wet n Wild went on the record and said, no, we're not being sold in China, even though people were sending in photos showing that they were being sold in China. That was where I drew the line with Wet n Wild. I had said, nope, I'm not having it. I will not back up a brand that blatantly lied to their customers about their cruelty-free status and where their products are being sold. So that is the difference between Physician's Formula and Wet n Wild. Alrighty, fixed it up the best I could. I'm so mad I jacked it up because it was looking so good so good but then again i do have a shadow for my ring light so yeah i'm still working on getting that right okay bear with me <laughs> all right now the next shade i want to use is this shade blind right here this little silvery shade i just want to kind of put that in the middle 
Um, and then I'm going to use it on my inner corner of my brow bone. But basically, those are the main topics I wanted. Ooh, ooh. that looks nice. Ooh, that gave it a nice little, like, purple pop to it. Hmm, kind of like that. All right, um, basically, those are the main topics I wanted to discuss with you guys today in this episode of Eyeshadows and Tea. Um, because those have been the two main ones that have been going around recently. So, yeah, I am going to finish up my eye look and then I will be right back to let you know my final thoughts on this palette. But, before I go, I am going to roll you guys the swatches of this palette. Please keep in mind there's no primer on my hand as always and one swipe swatches. swatches and this is the final look I absolutely really enjoyed it it's really red it's just oh I am like living for this look it has been a while since I have been able to find a true red eyeshadow that just stays red it doesn't blend out the pink it doesn't turn purple it's just oh it's really really good and I love it we love a monochromatic look yes we do <laughs> Um, um, as I said before, I did take the shade blind and put it on my inner corner and my brow, inner corner and my brow bone, make sure I was in it. Right. It does have like a little bit of a lavender tint to it. So it kind of brightens up the inner corner just a little bit more. Um, as far as this palette goes, I absolutely love it. It is a huge improvement from when I purchased the Tropic palette. I want to say it was a couple years ago, and I just, oh, between this and the ColourPop Whatever palette, those two palettes right there could be my, these two palettes could be my go-to red palettes. I mean, the, they put the Blood Sugar palette to shame, and everyone went gaga over that and called it the red palette. I, I, in my opinion, that's just no, I really love this. This is a really, really good palette, and it's well, well worth the price. Um, you can get this at Sephora, Beautylish, and Natasha Denona's website for $65. Trust me, it is worth the price. I highly recommend that you guys go get this. This is a home run. I see myself reaching for this quite a bit. And that is all that I have for you guys for this episode of Eyeshadows and Tea. All my social media handles will be down in the description box. I do not, however, have a Twitter account. So if you happen to see one with my face and this gorgeous smile, report it because it's fake. Also, all the other products that I did use on my face today will be listed in the description box as well. I love you all so much and I will see y'all next time. Bye! Ugh, I am like... Oh, right now. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm gonna get some heat for the PR issue. Oh well, don't care. <laughs> and this is the final, not what I wanted to say first. <laughs>